I'm convinced there's not many more valuable skills than being able to grow your own food. And that's what we strive to do at Grow at Home. I ask that you guys come over. I'll leave a link in the description. Check out the channel and subscribe. It's new, but our goal is to teach more people how to grow at home. It can be a lot easier with a little work and dedication. So come over and check out the channel. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about this yield curve because it's been inverted a total of 13 days. Now, this is the three month and the 10 year curve. A Bank of America was recently doing some research into the duration of a yield curve inversion prior to recessions because we know that typically whenever we see the yield curve invert, it is something that always precedes recessions. A difficulty there is is that there is a huge variation between the difference from inversion to the recessions. So it is not a reliable indicator in being able to time a recession. So in Bank of America's data, they showed that the longest streak that the yield curve actually inverted happened to be a whopping 120 days. And for the two year and the 10 year curve, that was inverted for 208 days on the longest streak. On average, there's about four inversions of each curve measure prior to a recession. So according to Bank of America's data, the total number of days that the curve would be inverted is actually very, very high. On average, the three month and the 10 year yield curve is inverted 180 days prior to a recession. And the two year and the 10 year curve is typically inverted 247 days prior to a recession. So we've seen that the three month and the 10 year yield curve has been inverted for a continuation of 13 days. And the two year and the 10 year curve has yet to invert through this current cycle. But the most interesting thing their data shows is whether or not the curve inversion is the cause of the weakening data whenever we see this economic data to enter this downward spiral or if it's a symptom. And they were able to prove definitively that most of the causation actually runs the other way. That means that the economic data for the three month and the 10 year yield curve, the economic data explains the moves in the curve. So they imply that a move in the curve is more likely to be a reflection of the moves of the economic data rather than what is driving it. So that means that the inversion of the yield curve right now at this point is not the cause of the weakening data. It is the result. It means that fears are running high. People are concerned about their money, as they very well should be. This has actually been one of the longest economic expansions on record without a correction. Not a meaningful one. Because we did have some very, very large losses heading into December. But look what happened. We seem to have recovered some of that. But notice we're still not at those all-time highs. We've been finding it more and more difficult for the market to have any meaningful movement. We have lost a lot of steam. A lot of the times this typically happens at the end of business cycles. Now probably one of the more pressing subjects at this point, because I've been tracking this very, very closely. This happens to be one of the worst years for farming going back in modern American history. And it is a very, very serious problem. You see, millions of acres of farmland has not been planted this year. And for many, it's to the stage where it's impossible to continue to plant anyway. The last 12 month period, it happened to see the largest amount of rainfall for any 12 month period in US history. And we see millions of acres of farms have been left unusable. So at this point, it is now being projected that 6 million acres of farmland that is usually actually in corn is going to go entirely unsown this year. And there's never actually been weather like this because the 12 months that ended in April happened to be the wettest ever for the contiguous United States. And corn plantings, they're further behind schedule for this time of year than they have been going back to 1980. And we also have problems with soybean because we have soybean anchors that are also not being planted. And according to the most recent crop progress indicator, only 67% of corn was planted. Now over the same geographic area, between 2014 and 2018, the average is 96%. So they're normally done by now. That's 30% of the corn that is typically planted not in the ground. And corn planting, it's actually been at an all time low percentage over the past three reports. And soybean planting is also behind in 16 out of 18 key soybean producing states. 
only 39% of soybean planting has taken place. And typically the five-year average is running 79% by June 2nd. So that's off by 50.6%. That's how far behind we are. We've actually never seen an event like this in modern history, and it really could test a lot of people. And as we mentioned, a lot of the difficulty these farmers face is the enormous amounts of debt that are taken during the off season. And a lot of people, they simply fund their lifestyle and their life with debt in the off season. And then whenever they come into production, they go and they pay off their debts. And they do the same thing continuously. And now we run into problems because, uh, well, you know, unforeseen events. And then you don't get planted. Or worse, some of the people who have been able to plant, we've still had the rains that has kept other farmers off the fields. So it's kept them off for other tasks as well. We see that overall production is not doing well. This could become a very, very serious problem. And because most of us are just so busy and we really become detached from life, we really forget how important food is, how important this particular sector is, because largely it's unloved. Nobody really cares about what problems they're going through. I mean, we've had negative headlines about record levels of bankruptcies among farms for months. I mean, the past year was terrible for U.S. farmers. What do you think we're going to go through this year? Because now we've already seen the struggles out there. There's been a struggle among the U.S. farmers. They've been filing for bankruptcy at record levels. So this has already been an event. Just the fact that on top of that, we are now seeing millions upon millions of acres that will not be planted. We're probably going to see that bankruptcy count go through the roof. And it's never really a problem until people begin to ask, where's my next meal going to come from? It's times like these that it is good to be self-sufficient, that it is good to know how to grow your own food. Because the life we see today is never promised. Things are changing. If you haven't been paying attention to that, that's one thing I am certain of. Whenever you look at the younger generations, their attitude about life is entirely different from those people that are just about 10 years older. We've seen a radical change in the consensus in this country. So things are changing. You best believe at the end of the day, it will not be good. So why do you expect that things will get better? Do you think that there's ever any hope of us paying off this national debt? Do you understand? We're about to enter into a recession. We already have 21, 22, who's counting anymore? Trillion dollars in debt. I can't even imagine <clears throat> what that looks like. $22 trillion of debt. It's insane. And so here we have it entering a recession at all-time historic highs. We have the Fed's balance sheet at unprecedented levels, things that are just unheard of. And here we go. What are we going to do to get ourselves out of this one? And you know, Ray Dalio, he was the one that was warning about this for months. He was even getting those headlines. But for the most part, people don't care whenever they choose. They choose to accept the more positive information, and they, they like to dismiss warnings. They like to dismiss negative signs. They like to dismiss data a lot of the times. I mean, look how many experts are talking about how the yield curve, how inversions, they don't matter. They're not a good predictor of recessions anymore. But we are running into a very difficult time. On top of that, what is the dollar going to look like? with whatever kind of measures they're going to need to implement because we already see that the Fed is coming out and they're saying that they're going to need to implement some more unprecedented measures. Some things we may have not seen before. We already know that Janet Yellen was calling for some changes. Even though she's not at the Fed anymore, she's still an influential voice and she was calling for changes and enabling the Fed to be able to purchase stocks directly. So they already know that they're going to have this difficulty. They would like more control, supreme control over the U.S. stock market, but that's an entirely different subject. Either way, we know that what they have, their equipment to be able to handle this kind of economic situation is very, very limited. They need some extraordinary changes to be able to, to deal with what is coming down the line. Now we saw the ADP employment in April. It seemed to be doing pretty strong. So of course, most of the expert economists, they expected that May would have some slowing growth in employment. What we actually saw, the ADP report that actually came out today, it shows America added just 27,000 jobs in May. Now, the expectation 
185,000. So only 27,000. It shows that the hiring has just collapsed. This is the weakest growth going back to March 2010. Keep in mind, that was a month with losses of 113,000 jobs. So this is the weakest growth we've seen since that period. It's also the smallest gain since this current period of what they label the economic expansion has begun. So the most shocking part is the fact that small business employment, it just completely collapsed. It fell negative 52,000 jobs. Very small businesses, of course, they fell even worse. That would be one to 19 people. And of course, goods producing businesses, we saw that they had declines in every sector. One of the most concerning out of all of it would be the construction jobs. You see, they just completely have fallen apart. This has been the trend. So the chief economist of Moody's Analytics, his name is Mark Zandi, he said, quote, jobs growth is moderating. Labor shortages are impeding job growth, particularly at small companies. Layoffs at brick and mortar retailers are hurting as well. So we're talking about momentum has screeched to a near halt. And we've not seen numbers like this in the jobs market since we had the jobs market bottom. Now, construction overall saw a loss of 36,000 jobs. Whenever you begin to see construction slow down, you know that we are entering a contraction. So, yes, we do see that the Dow is up. We do see that the stock market is up. And why is that? Well, the Federal Reserve came out, and this is really kind of shocking. He had announced that he's going to be entirely accommodative, that the Federal Reserve is prepared to do whatever they need to do to be able to keep this economy afloat. This should not be a you know, sign of strength. This is a very, very concerning time for our economy. Keep in mind, these people were the ones who said that this whole program was on autopilot not too long ago. Now, Jerome Powell came out and he said, quote, we are closely monitoring the implications of these developments for the U.S. economic outlook and, as always, we will act as appropriate to sustain the expansion with a strong labor market and inflation near our symmetric 2% objective. So in essence, the market is rallying because the Fed has said that they will cut interest rates. In fact, just uh, you know, in the hours after his comments, the S&P 500 it rose 2.1%. That was the second best daily gain for the year. The mar markets reacted so closely to what Jerome Powell was saying that there was actually a rise in yields. All right, thank you guys for joining us here at the Silver Report Uncut. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe, like the videos, share the videos, get the word out. I thank you so much for stopping by. As always, stay safe.